For 20 years, you've trusted us to reinvent the standard in sports nutrition products. We don't plan on stopping, just like you. Kevin Lavroni, also known as a Maryland muscle machine, is a legend in bodybuilding. He retired back in 2003, but then made a highly anticipated comeback on a pro stage in 2016. Although most fans were excited about his comeback, some didn't believe that Kevin would actually follow through with it. He did. At the age of 52, Kevin Lavroni stepped back on the stage against the top bodybuilders in the world. Ultimately, Kevin was unhappy with his performance. He decided to make the second comeback, this year at the Arnold Classic in Australia. As he made the announcement, we began working on his docu-project. That's how Born to Overcome was created. I sat down for a conversation with Kevin a week after his return from Australia. At the age of 53, he made a second return to the pro stage and once again proved to the world that it can be done. Kevin, great to see you, man. Last time I saw you, you were a month away from the Arnold Classic Australia. Um, at that time, a lot of people, mm -hmm. it seemed like they doubted you. Yes. And actually thought you might skip it, right? Yeah. What kind of a mindset were you going through um, as you were getting closer to the competition? I think um, when you compete on a level such as myself, I'm not just new at this. You know, there's so much history. You're talking about competing constantly for 13 years and an average of eight shows in my year throughout every, each year. 68 shows, you know, 22 first place wins in the IFBB at, at the most time when it was, you know, the competition was devastating, challenging. For me, this is not going to say easy. It's not easy, but you reach that point to where you know that you're in that method mode and you know that it's game on time. Before your original combat, you competed in the 90s and the early 2000s. Um, what do you think is the main difference between being on a stage then and now? I think one of the main differences is the fact that I'm able, through the platform of Generation Iron, the platform that's laid down right now, we're able to go direct, hit a button right now on, on, on through Instagram, social media, and be able to talk to a guy you know, in Iraq, a guy in India, a guy over in Egypt, a guy in Japan, all the way around the world, you know, Hawaii, Mexico, wherever they are, we're able to do that. And that's the huge difference, you know, and I'm able to get feedback. Hey guys, do you guys like this? You know, I'm able to interact with them and get their opinions and allow them to come into my life and help me make decisions, you know? Hey, what would you guys like to see? Don't forget, you know, this whole comeback was encouraged by my fans. You know, not by me wanting to be Mr. Olympia. I felt like I already, got my Mr. Olympia when my son was born, you know what I mean? I feel like I just have so much now in my age, you know, it's unbelievable. But this was encouraged by my fans. And if it wasn't for that social media platform that we have today, I would have never known how bad they wanted, you know, and I would never, never be able to, you know, they motivated me, man. So I really appreciate it. And I always say I appreciate, and our fans is like my fan family, you know, because those guys motivate me get into the gym, boom, 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 in the push. And that's why I'm here right now. And they were right. I'm glad I did come back. I'm glad I listened to them. Take me through the final week, the week right before the competition. What was happening? Yeah, sure. I mean, that final week before the competition, I knew that my training had maxed out. I knew that I had done everything possibly leading up to the show. Um, that final week, I knew that I was ready to jump on a plane and go at the last minute. The final last 24 hours before the show, and that's when you sit back and you can train on train and train to train, but it's always that last week, last 48 hours of preparation that's gonna put that determining factor. And uh, for me, I showed up on stage. A lot of people were disappointed, my fans were disappointed. And I was okay with it. I was okay with it because I knew what I looked like 
I knew that uh, I had put on size and I knew that I looked better than I did 2016. That was my goal. But I also knew that I didn't push 100% far as depleting the water out of my body, depleting myself um, to be 100% as dry as I possibly could. I chose not to do that. I, chose, I talked to my doctor, Woosley Performance, and we decided we weren't gonna do that. We were gonna play the safe route, okay? To deplete the water. To deplete the water. Um, this was the deciding factor of what I was gonna look like. I was obviously holding eight pounds more water than I should have been holding, and I knew it, I was okay. And I said, two things are gonna happen. Either I'm gonna deplete myself, be too depleted, be over here by myself, walk out on stage, end up being flat, or I can go out here, hold on to the size, the thickness, be you know talked about because, oh, he's big and he's not in shape. So we chose the big route. <laughs> we got criticized for that, but also knew that, hey, I'm gonna be back home in Baltimore. There's a guest posting coming up and I'll do what I need to do to pull some water back home where I'm comfortable at and uh, take, those, take more of a risk than going to Australia, 17 hour plane flight, um, you know, jet lag, all these things. So I, I just waited for my body to, to do what it's naturally gonna do in its environment, which is, and I look 50% better. I saw you on stage in Australia. Uh -huh. You were definitely way bigger than yeah. you were in 2016. I understand the whole water thing, but size-wise, you were definitely bigger. Yeah, a, a lot of people didn't understand. Uh, they couldn't see the size because they was focused on the water. Then they was focused on the water and they saw size everywhere. You follow what I'm saying? It just goes to show that, you know, with, in, in this, in our industry, you know, water plays a certain role. It, so the size was there. The water came because of the flight, obviously. I, I do know that. But I was okay with it because I knew that I had put on size where I needed to put on size. I knew that I brought my legs up. And also knew that, you know what, when I get back to Maryland, I can pull water and I'm gonna be able to show the world uh, something entirely different. So it didn't happen on the stage in Australia, but it happened a week later on the stage in my hometown in Baltimore, you know, to where I felt like I did overcome the obstacles. I did put the size on my legs that, that they say and that couldn't be done. You know, I did bring up the back, I did bring up all those body parts, and, it's, and, and, and I felt like you know, we, we, we finished the race that we set out to do, and you know, we had that opportunity to, to prove to my fans that, hey, look, look at me now, boom. It might not be on that stage, but it happened on this stage, you know. My goal um, going into all that Australia thing was to look better than in 2016, to be 80% of what Kevin Laverne uh, used to be. And uh, I feel like I'm 80% of that right now, today. That's it. I'm happy with that. When you first retired in 2003, I remember you told me um, you didn't want to go back to the gym and you took a lot of time off, actually. Um, what about right now? Do you want to stay away from the gym? you no. want to come back? How, what is your mindset now? I'm going to stay in the gym. I'm going to continue to train hard like I used to through this whole process. Because uh, I, 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 see, I see that my body hasn't accepted being old. You know, I feel good. I feel great. I, lo I look like I look like a... 15 years ago, you know, so there's no reason for me to stop. This is what God created me to do, man, you know, and I, I feel like even through this comeback, you know, it wasn't about me winning first place, second, or any of that. It was just about me getting out there, motivating people, you know, and I, I just thank God that God gave me this platform through social media, tied me up with you guys. It just happened and fell in place, and that's when you know it's right. Because we're not trying to sell anybody anything. You know, we're just sitting here saying, hey, this is what we're doing. You can be part of it. Learn from it. This is how I did it. Boom, 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 boom. You know, this is, and it's great. People, people love that, that connection. You know, so I'm not going to take that away from them. It's not costing me anything. I'm doing what I love doing, and I'm continuing to do it. I'm looking forward to traveling around the world, motivating people more than ever. You know, if anything, I could just say to the guys, you're going to see me with less and less clothes on, you know, but I'm always covered up in the gym, but I think, you know, now it's just 
just about revealing uh, the hard work and everything that I worked so hard for. So there's no point in me stopping there. You made a statement in Australia that it was going to be your last competitive performance on stage. With that in mind, how did you feel when you when you entered the stage for the final time? Me competing on an Australia on Classic was completely, it was amazing. And if you look at my, my whole being, my aura and everything, it was a lot better than 2016. 2016, I was full of doubts. When Tony announced me and everything, I mean, I knew what music I was going to go with. I knew what I looked like. I knew that I had put on some size and stuff. I, I was ready for that moment to walk out there, you know, and I accept whatever, whatever placing I had got. But also, it was just more of a, more of like, you know what, I felt like this is it, you know, I'm okay, I'm okay with walking away looking like this now. Yeah, the audience really embraced that. Yeah, You know, there was yeah. a standing ovation going on. It, it really was a standing ovation. Everybody stood up. I was, I was good with that, man. It's one of the best introductions I've ever had in my entire life. And I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. I'm completely happy with that. So I'm good, you know, I won't compete, I won't compete again. That was actually going to be my next question. No, I won't compete again. Uh, I feel like there's no really no no point into doing it. Um, I'm just going to stay in shape for my fans, stay in shape to motivate. Uh, I will continue to train hard, uh, be on the road, uh, pretty much doing what Kai Green's doing now. You know, you don't really have to be on stage to be an influence in this sport. You know, social media has made it so such a platform to where. You know, every day is your stage, you know, your, your social media stage, you know, so I can go in the gym around the world, regardless of where I'm at, take my shirt off. As long as I'm in shape, as long as I can show them progress, that my legs are growing, and that my body's constantly evolving and changing and getting better, I think that's what the fans want to see, you know, and I don't have to be, I don't have to pick and choose a show to do that at. I can choose and do that right here on Generation Iron. You know what I mean? And you guys gave me that platform to do it. And, and really that's what it's all about. You know, we motivate right here in Generation Iron. We don't have to wait till the Arnold Classic or the Mr. Olympia to do that. You know, and the fans love it. You know, it's this daily, weekly, monthly updates. As long as they know that I'm not letting them down, that I didn't quit, and I'm continually moving forward and helping educating these guys saying, look, it can be done. Look at me at my age, man. I totally did a 360. You know, and don't settle, don't settle for for anything less than what you feel in your heart. And don't settle because someone say that you can't, because you won't. Let that, let that negativity drive you towards you know, your destiny. And I think, I think that's everyone's purpose. So right now, you know, we're still in progress of working on your documentary, Born, Born to Overcome. Um, what do you want people to take away from this project? I want people to get from Born to Overcome. Number one, you're going to have people doubting you. Overcome the doubters. Overcome your fear. The third thing is, you don't need a sense of direction. All you need is belief in yourself, okay? Only you have the map to your success. You cannot follow someone in someone else's footsteps and try to mimic and be like someone else because you're just a copycat. Follow your heart, Trust in your decisions, and in the end, the more time you spend in solitude, the more time you spend alone, away from negativity, the more sacrifice you spend, you know, eating right and these things, the more clearer that your purpose will come to you. Because you know, when you're when you're up in the middle of crowds constantly every single day, every single day, you become part of the crowd, you know. But when you're alone and you're searching, and, you, and, and you're studying, and you're reading, you're learning your abilities and your visions, and things come clear to you when you are away from the crowd, disengaged away from the crowd. It comes through almost like, there's a reason why Muslims say fast. The reason, there's a reason why God wants us to to uh, get away and to fast and to go out into the wilderness because when you do these things, your purpose becomes a lot more clear to you. So what I want them to do is don't be afraid to step away from what everyone else is doing. Spend some time alone. You know, when my father died, I spent a lot of time alone. 
I didn't know what I was going to do, didn't know who I, where I was going to go, but I knew that that alone time, eventually, I found myself, you know, and I was able to grow stronger, believing in myself and everything. So born to overcome is trusting your decisions, believing in who you are, taking that and know, knowing that when you trust and believe in who you are, you can overcome any obstacles in the world. A man will never be able to control your destiny. He will only be able to push you closer to, what, to, what, to your purpose through his hate, through his negativity, anything that he throws your way, okay? That's what Born Overcome is all about, you know? And to sum that up in a nutshell, we have no enemies. I have no enemies. You know, I want to say every person out there who proclaims to be a hater or proclaims to be an enemy of yours, they're shooting you in a direction. Whether they're gaining you strength, you're gaining strength from the hate, you're reading things that they say, they're trying to beat you down. They're putting you in a place that's just building you up and stronger and putting you on a track that is gonna lead you to your destiny. Does everybody know about Jesus crucified on the cross, right? Uh, Simon Peter, which was close to Jesus, he said, we're not gonna allow this to happen. But Jesus told him, step aside, Satan, right? Which, if Simon Peter had intervened without Jesus going to that cross, mankind would have never been saved forever. So he told him, step aside, Satan, because the devil wanted to stop him from reaching his purpose. So even though Simon Peter was a friend, he said, I don't want you to go through this. God knew that by him going through that hardship, it was leading him to a greater victory. Okay. Now, uh, Judas, um, the one that betrayed him, Jesus, Jesus took and kissed him. He says, he gave him a kiss on the cheek. He says, come my friend, now go do what you have to do. Okay, so we look at it as, oh, he betrayed him. He sold him for some coins, he betrayed him, right? But no, God knew that by you hating on me, it's gonna lead me to my destination, you see? And so he called him friend. The ones that hate on you, the ones that say you can't get your legs back, the ones that say you can't do this or whatever, embrace that because they're just strengthening you for your greater victory. They're strengthening you to run faster to make it through that finish line. All that stuff that I heard about me, it strengthened me to come in the gym, not stop in 2016, and push me to where I'm at right now. If I had never continued and come going forward, I would never even ran into you guys. It would, Born Overcome wouldn't even exist. So I embraced it all, and I just want you guys out there to embrace it all and not look at anything as a negative. That's, that's pushing you towards your purpose and your destiny in life, regardless of whatever it is. You just gotta be willing to overcome and to believe that you are born to overcome what you think or what the world may throw at you. And you might say, well, this is bad, but it's not. It's for a greater purpose in your life. And that's what this is all about. Thanks so much, Kevin, man. Great interview. Thank you, brother. Thanks. Thanks. All right.